another adventure begins. Here we are at the Burbank Airport, heading out. All right, we're heading off to Seattle. Me and this lady. It's not a morning person. <laughs> Well, I was thinking we haven't been to Seattle for a while, and I was thinking Amy's never been to Seattle. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Secured. Your safety and well being are always. All right, Amy, welcome to Seattle. We finally made it, your first time here. Yay. So Amy and I just checked into our room here. We're staying at the Cedar Brook Lodge. We'll let you know how that goes. But we wanted to go out and do something right away. And the first thing that popped in my head was going to Renton and visiting a guitar god. So let's go. And here's your first little taste of the Cedar Brook Lodge. Kind of a cool place already. Take a look at these. These are great. Amy and I were just sitting here admiring them and we found out they're called Tea of Heaven. All right, we've made it to the city of Renton. And I've been here before. I've vlogged this place before, but just as a sign of respect, I wanted to come back as my first stop once we got here. And we'll go off and see some other things, but I think, you know, you just have to stop and see Jimmy. I think you just have to when you're in this area. All right, as we slowly pull into the cemetery, you can find Jimmy right smack dab in the center. Take a look. This is one of the most impressive memorials I've ever seen in all of my travels. This is definitely one of the coolest. You can see they put Jimmy's name right there. And then when you walk inside, they have this massive Stratocaster and all these great murals of Jimmy inside here. Take a look at these. Some pictures of him as a little boy with his dad. This place is just absolutely amazing. Then over here. To me, probably one of the earliest, most important guitar players of all time. He checked off every box in the rock and roll superstar book. Cool clothes, amazing style, playing, innovative. The guy just was, I mean, for as short of a career as he had, he really made a lot of music during that time and left a lot of recordings like i said his fashion was just unbelievable and most of that he got from his days in la hanging out with arthur lee now, he used to have a kind of a small grave and everything but they've since erected this and i believe that i heard fender donated this gigantic stratocaster and you can see people leave guitar picks and cigarettes and all kinds of things. 
usually I've been out here two times I think on the last trip and it's usually beer bottles and joints and all that stuff and then right down here you can see forever in our hearts James M Jimi Hendrix he's buried here because this is where he was raised Seattle and then he joined the military And then check this out back here. And then he's got the lyrics for Voodoo Child. Right here it is. Feet. And then if you take a look over on this side, you can see they put his signature. There's an autograph right there. And then here is his dad. My buddy Eric Singer, his favorite guitar player of all time is Jimi Hendrix. So I thought, why not bring an Eric Singer pick? You're probably wondering, why does a drummer have a pick? Because he said, I can't walk around with drumsticks to give to everybody, so I walk around with guitar picks to give to people. So let's see if we can't find a way to wedge these in here. Amy, here's one for you. Let's see. There's gotta be a way. There's gotta be. Uh-huh. And I'll put mine down here. If we can fit it in there. There we go. Yep, just an obligatory first stop when you enter Seattle for me. Now let's go see some more cool Seattle stuff. So yeah, I know Renton's not technically part of Seattle, but that's where we're heading to now, Seattle. So it's about 30 minutes away. So the last time I was in town, I made one of my most popular videos ever, and we're gonna go back and revisit that so Amy can see it. But while I was making that vlog, I stopped over in this area and ate at Cactus, so we're gonna do that as well, but check out this. Amy wants to go feel the water. You like it? Let me feel. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Now I believe that is Mount Rainier that we're seeing from here. So we came to Cactus last time I was here because we were doing the Kurt Cobain vlog and this is one of the last places that he ate at. There it is. Kurt had his last meal here. He actually sat outside but we're dining inside today. All right, our appetizer came, we tried something called Austin style guacamole and it's guacamole with queso. Yeah. So yeah, we had to try it. <laughs> All right, gotta scoop it up here. Super good. Oh, it is? You like it? Uh-huh. Aw. It's really good. You always make me eat. <laughs> I give him seal of approval. Amy and I both decided on the fish tacos or the uh, Pescado tacos, so they look pretty good. That's two. Looks like an entire plate full, but it's really two. All right, our food was magnificent. Now we're gonna head over to the final home of Kurt Cobain, lead singer in Nirvana. And just a short five minute drive away. So here's the old estate. I think I heard that it's up for sale now. Right beyond this. Right around the corner from his house. This is the little park that fans have turned into kind of a memorial area. And you can even see a little bit of the house peeking through up there.
Amy's checking out the Kurt Memorial bench. Pretty sad when you gotta board up kinder care. You can see just about everything down here is boarded up. That's an interesting memorial with the parrots. I love the art in Seattle. Amy, don't you love the art in Seattle already? Yeah, it's super nice. Amy wants to be the ultimate Seattle tourist while we're here and get like Seattle clothes and bags and stuff when we saw this. I'm personally a fan of that one. I'm a huge fan of their Seattle Supersonics art. That's great. So Amy really wanted to see Pike Place Market, so that's where we're headed to now. You can see the big public market sign right there. That's what it's kind of known for. I love the cobblestone streets and colored awnings and even that pig up there. That's great. Well, as we walk in, I immediately noticed that that famous fish market right there where they always throw the fish across is closed. Nobody's even over here taking pictures with the pig. Man, dead market. One of the things that you have to do here in Seattle is go to Gum Alley, so I'm bringing Amy to the Ghost Alley down here. Yep, that is all gum. Quite an attraction here. I'm taking Amy to the waterfront stairs. I love this mural. And that's also a great mural. Take a look at that. All the musicians and everyone here enjoying the farmer's market. I love this, look at that. Too bad most of the places in here are closed because this place has some really amazing t-shirts. Take a look at that one. And that one. A few things are open, like the jewelry stores are open, which I'm kind of surprised by, but most everything else is kind of closed. Yeah, even the magic shop's closed. Take a look, it's the world famous giant shoe museum. World's largest collection of giant shoes. See a shoe actually worn by Robert Wadlow. Holy moly. Seattle Shoes of Mystery. Shall we? Shall we? There's the story of mystery. You have to pay for Robert Wadlow's shoe, which is unfortunate because I don't have a quarter on me. And you also have to pay for the... See, nothing's free. Nothing's free in life. <laughs> but, cool concept. Man, this is disappointing. So we should have expected it, but... Yeah, all the outdoor vendors are, vendors are all closed. Looks like we found a restaurant over here that might be open. We decided to stop here and get a drink. Almost classy Lowell's. I'd say we definitely got an amazing view for our little drink we're gonna stop and have here together. So this is, this is, um, it's called, where'd it go, where'd it go? Larry? Salmon infused. No, no, it's called, it's called Smoked Salmon Vodka. Amy's gonna try it out. Let us know what you think, Amy. Oh, should I just do a shot? Like, should I just do it? Like, just shoot yeah, it like a shot? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, do it. Everyone's gonna be so mad at me. That's the only way to find out what it's really like. Go for it. Here we go.
It has to be, I was gonna say, it has to not be great at first. It's salmon and vodka. It's fishy. <laughs> yeah, I would guess so. Not your thing? You wouldn't want a Bloody Mary with it? You know what, I'll tell you, because he watered it down, because he shook it. Yeah. I'd say this, it tastes like I just now drank the water from, or the melted ice water from where they lay the fish at the grocery store. Yeah. Not good, huh? And like the sun beating down on the ice that the fish were just laying on. So you didn't like and it. And then it melted, and then I drank it. So if I ever had a mantra, it's this. I have it on my very first acoustic guitar, J.R.R. Tolkien, not all who wander are lost. It says care for your mind by reading. I, I could agree with that. And meditating. So where Amy and I are heading off to now is something I had read about and I wanted to come visit last time I was in Seattle. I didn't get a chance, but I just love this story because I love anybody that is completely defiant against people that are trying to win with money. And this is just absolutely one of the greatest cases and a heck of a great movie was inspired by it. We're on the Ballad Bridge. Well, as you can see, we've stumbled upon a giant high-rise building. And over here where Amy's walking back from, she found a lot of balloons tied to a fence. And when I think of balloons in a movie, I think of Up. And that's exactly what this was. This was Edith Maysfield's house. They built this whole sky rise around her property because she refused to sell it. She actually was offered $1 million to give up her house. It was called a nail house. It was one of the last surviving ones. And she lived here until I believe 2005 when she passed away or 2008. And now the house sits here right in the middle of, you can see this whole building is all built all the way around it. And then Pixar made the movie up, which is a fantastic movie if you've never seen it. And then people obviously, as you can see, come by here and tie balloons because that's the connection to Up. So if you don't know Up, what Up is about is basically, it's the story of one man who lives in a house and he reflects early on in the movie on this girl that he met when he was a child that he fell in love with and they always had this dream of going up and living you know, in outer space and they show his whole life with this love of his life, Jenny, and then eventually she dies and he becomes a stubborn old man who lives in this house by himself until a young boy one day decides to come and try and get some money from him, befriend him, and the man that lives here decides to tie a bunch of balloons to his house and float up into outer space. And that's basically what happens in the movie. So this was the inspiration, this house was the actual inspiration for that movie. Ed Asner plays the, the lead in it, it's such a great movie. But it's so cool to see that this house still exists and this story, even though it's all emptied out and you can see it's abandoned for the most part, it's so cool to see that people care enough about this story and that there's one person in the midst of a world that just is obsessed with money that one person loved their house enough to not want to give it up for a million dollars so that a place like this and this Ross next door and the UPS store and all that could could be here. So I don't know what the plans are now that she's gone. They call this the Up House of Seattle or the house that refused to move. Here you can see a lock on the doors. Amy made a good point. She said it looks like someone must be doing something because of all the plywood and everything. Because you can see right up here, you can see some of the original boards and everything that are clearly falling apart. So someone must have been left this property when she passed away that must own it or something must be done. I actually saw online that they used this for a promotional video for Up when they were releasing the movie. They actually came and filmed here. Then read this little balloon. It says, when I was a kid, I always hoped the alien who found my balloon was happy.
I would have loved to have just, you know, got a peek inside, but like I said, you couldn't even find online who owns this place anymore. Amy wants us to make a wish, so she's gonna pull a little flower out of there. Well, let's make a wish for everybody. All right, everybody right now, make a wish. And I'm gonna blow it and your wish is gonna come true. Ready? One, two, three. Good job, Amy. The wish has come true. my friends I hope you enjoyed our first day here in Seattle we're gonna call it a night from SeaTac that's actually where we are we're more in the SeaTac area that's kind of in the middle of Seattle and Tacoma from SeaTac we're gonna say good night and tomorrow we'll go explore something very special in Seattle I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog have a great night and goodbye <laughs>